Happy Tuesday to you. Oh, good, man. Storylines everywhere. College football and also the NFL. Really a cool tweet that was sent out by Zach Ertz. And we're going to get to all of that. No question about it, man. There's certain dudes that just love where they play. There's certain dudes that just get inspired where they played. And anything that Zach Kurtz has said about the city of Philadelphia, it comes off as heartfelt. You know, he didn't want to leave the Philadelphia Eagles. He gave every single thing of his heart and soul to that organization and to the city and to its fan base, which is legendary. The things that he's posted and written as a fan, if I'm a fan in Philadelphia, I look at that guy and go, man, I, I just so love Zach Ertz being part of our organization's great history. That dude's going to go down as one of those guys that were in that crew that won that Super Bowl, that the city embraced, that the city loved, the Chris Longs of the world, the Lane Johnsons, all them dudes, man. They're going to go down in infamy. That's what you want when you're talking about going to a place, playing in a city. You get a chance to do something that very few people on the planet get a chance to do. And it's so wonderful, so wonderful to see Zach Ertz, you know, throw that kind of love out to the city of Philadelphia. It really is. And then on the other hand, you have Ben Simmons. Let's do this on Ben Simmons here, and let's try to be as rational as we possibly can about Ben Simmons. Don't hate the player. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. This is an NBA thing, folks. This is not a Philadelphia 76er thing. On one hand, you have Zach Ertz thanking everybody in Philadelphia for he and his family's time the energy that it took, the hard work, the practice. I came there as a boy and I left as a man kind of stuff. And Ben Simmons today at practice, Doc Rivers asked him, hey, man, we got to do some defensive drills. Can you jump in here? No. Hey, man, we really need you. We got the opener against the Pelicans. No. Then why don't you go home? Drops the ball and leaves. And get this. Why should he care? His money's guaranteed. The NBA had a version of this a year ago with James Harden. What was James Harden doing with the Houston Rockets? Okay? He didn't want to be in Houston anymore. So he showed up as a fat ass. He ate himself out of the Rocket organization. Went to strip clubs. Had no caring about the COVID-19 protocols. And he got his way because you know why? And that league, the NBA, it's filled with entitled players. The coaches and the organization have no power over these guys anymore. You think they really care about where they play, who they play with? Why do you think the Brooklyn Nets now, with all those great superstars, they're not going to win an NBA championship? You know why? That's a different big three. James Harden, selfish. Kevin Durant, selfish. Kyrie Irving, I don't know, selfish. Ignorant, I don't know. Whatever day it is, there's something new with him. So when people look at Ben Simmons and go like this, dude, you're a cancer to the Sixer organization. Well, duh. But the NBA entitles that. A couple of years ago, when Carmelo Anthony was in New York, okay? Remember what was said there? Phil wanted to move him. You know what? And he had a no-trade clause. And you know what Carmelo said? Phil will be gone before I will. And it turned out to be true. We can call Ben Simmons' names all we want here, but this is an NBA deal. This is how these guys and their posses Roll. Okay? Rich Paul and all of the major agents and the agency and 
LeBron James, congratulations, LeBron. Instead of inspiring people like Magic and Larry and Michael Jordan did on being team players, you've inspired people to be exactly what the league is. If I don't like what's going on on my particular team, I'll just pick up, go to some place that's got loaded players, and I'll try to win an NBA championship. Some of you would say, but Sills, is that a bad thing? No, but I think there's a way in doing it. Look at how Zach left Philadelphia. He's heartbroken. He is absolutely heartbroken. But he knows he has a job, and he knows he has something that could be potentially out there for him with this Cardinal team where he can win a championship and solidify his resume, and now he's got to go with new brothers in Arizona. He knows that it's a challenge right now. You know what Ben Simmons thinks about the Sixers right now? It could be the Sixers. It could be the T-Wolves. Does it matter? Does it matter, really? That guy doesn't care about Philadelphia. He doesn't care about Joel Embiid. He doesn't care about... You gave Jimmy Butler's ass up for that. You know what this comes down to? Not doing your homework. Oh, and for the Sixers side of this, you drafted the guy. Did you not know this? Did you not talk to him? Was the ability so blinding on Ben Simmons that you thought that his character flaws would overweigh it? You know that's what people do. They'll look at a guy and go, you know, his ability outshadows some of his lack of merits that he has as a character person. When character matters always. Character matters. I don't want a character. I want character guys. All these guys are products of LeBron James's era. Congratulations, LeBron. Look at the NBA player. You know what people in the media will tell you, too? The NBA players today speak their minds more. You know, they, they are more politically activist, you know? And you're like, really? Then why are your ratings down 50%? What, why are less people watching the NBA today than they did five years ago? Yeah, you, you make it sound like you're the NFL. Here, get this, guys. Think of this for a second. Watch this. By the way, congratulations to everybody coming aboard here today. I'm sorry. I'm on a little rant here. And I appreciate it. Hey, Trev, Joey B, Shakur, thank you guys for all coming aboard, man. You guys all add to the show. We're going to go back over here in a minute, bud. So I watch a guy like Lamar Jackson. And I look at Lamar Jackson. And then I do this. The NBA has Kyrie Irving, James Harden, and Ben Simmons because they don't like where they are or they don't like what's going on. They whine and cry and want to take their bat and ball somewhere else to another sandbox. How soft can you be, man? How soft can you be as an athlete or as a human? You can't build a team around Kyrie Irving. It was proven in Boston. He tried to be the, the big dog, and that thing fell on its face. Guy goes to Brooklyn, plays on Tuesdays or Thursdays or whatever the calendar, the Kyrie calendar in his head, and now you've got Simmons in. Hey, by the way, you don't think Simmons sees the rest of this crap going on too as a young player? Well, if they can do it, I can do it. It's now a virus. You want to know, hey, the NBA is fighting two viruses. COVID-19 and being absolute prima donnas. The prima donna virus. The prima donna virus is running rampant right now in the NBA. Okay? They got the prima donna virus. And you know what, folks? There's no vaccination for this one. There, hey, there's your algorithm. There's no vaccination for the prima donna virus. You can't be cured from it. You can't be cured. 
It's an incurable disease in the NBA right now. And it's spreading throughout the league. Look at how they act towards management. Hey, look, I'm not saying that you have to bend over and kiss management's ass all the time. It's not what I'm saying here. But get up and get in drills, and you're making $30 million a year? What a tool. What a tool. He's a disgrace. He's a disgrace, man. The prima donna virus, where there's no vaccination that will cure these NBA guys. Funny, Tony Bruno said something and was only goofing on, you know, LeBron James last year, two years ago, whatever the hell it was. You know what I think happens with the NBA guys? They don't have common sense. Because when a guy gets up off his ass in Philadelphia at 6 a.m. in the morning and he's a roofer and he's got to go out and he's got to go in the damn cold, he's got to scrape crap off his, off the front of his windshield, he's driving around in 10 feet of snow so that he can feed his family. And guess what? I don't want to, I don't want to uh, play defense. And nor do I care about your responsibilities. And nor do I care about your being the head coach of the Sixers. It has no bearing on me. has no bearing on me. You look at guys like that and go, you can't win with that. You know why? Because there's no reasoning. Whew. Man, maybe I'm just jealous of the NBA. I don't know. Maybe I'm jealous because these guys get to do whatever they want. They get paid. Hey, you get to play when you want to. If I don't feel like playing on a Wednesday, I could do this if I'm an NBA guy. I don't think I'm going to play. You imagine walking into Bill Belichick's office and going like this, I don't think I'm practicing Wednesday. Bill, is that all right? That's okay. Whether or not you like it or not, I'm just going to, you know, I'm not practicing Wednesday. Man, you don't do that in the NFL. You get fired for that. They'll send you on your way. Conduct detrimental, they'll fire your ass. And by the way, Doc Rivers and the Sixers putting conduct detrimental on why they sent him home. I mean, that's got to be the first time I've ever seen in my life conduct detrimental being implemented on an NBA guy. Doc must be so pissed off. He must have showed so much disrespect with that cell phone in his pocket. Dude, he don't want to be there. 